Okay, first of all, pardon my very messy writing. Usually when I'm using a pen and a piece of paper, it comes out a little neater than this. Far from perfect, but um, I'm still getting used to the iPad and the stylus, so this is what you got. Alright, at this point in the lesson, you should know all of the identities and properties shown on the screen. The identities are what allow you to remove the DDX symbol. It takes out the DDX, in other words, it gets rid of the derivative symbol and just replaces it with a straightforward algebraic um, statement. So we got the really simple ones. We got that derivative of a constant is zero. We got the power rule. We got derivative of a natural log is 1 over x, derivative of e to the x is e to the x, derivative of sine x is cosine x, and derivative of cosine is negative sine. Alright, now usually uh, the identities are one of the last things you use in solving, a, uh, in solving for a derivative. The first thing you use is some algebraic manipulation. And then the second thing you use are properties. Okay, so your properties are listed over here on the right. The first property is that you can take a, if you have a constant times a function, you can take the constant and move it outside the function. The second property says that if you're taking the derivative of two functions added together, that's the same as taking the derivative of the first function plus the derivative of the second function. Um, whatever symbol plus or minus is in the middle here also shows up plus or minus in the middle here. By the way, this does not work for multiplication and, and division. Uh, that's a whole separate rule that you do not have to know for this class. But this does, this property does also work for subtraction. Remember, subtraction is just adding a negative. So it makes sense that any property that works for addition will also work for subtraction. Okay, last but not least is a property that we will get into later. Uh, I just want to have it on the list. And that's this one, which is sometime, uh, which is usually called the chain rule. Okay, but before we get into the chain rule, let's practice the properties and identities that you should already be familiar with. Okay, so here's three sample problems, all of which can be solved using the identities that you have uh, listed on the previous page, and we'll be flipping back and forth. I'll do solutions in blue. Okay, so first you're asked to take the derivative of 5 sine t plus 8 cosine t. By the way, always make sure that the symbol down here is the same as the variable in your, uh, in your equation. Because this is the variable that you're taking the derivative with respect to, and this is the independent variable in your equations. So as long as they're all the same you can proceed. If not, anything other than uh, than this variable should be considered a constant. Anyway, let's start working this out. Alright, first things first, do any sort of algebraic manipulation you have to. In this case, there's no really productive algebraic manipulation we can do. Second thing is to uh, is that we have a addition symbol here, and if we look back on our properties, if we have two functions added together, then we can spread out the derivative function. We can uh, effectively distribute the derivative function, so or the derivative operation. So the first thing we're going to do is take this one big derivative and break it into two little derivatives.
Yikes, that is an ugly parenthesis. Come on. That's even uglier. There we go. That's at least marginally acceptable. Okay, so plus the derivative of quantity 8 cosine t. Okay, so like I said, we've split the two functions added together and then taking the derivative into derivative of the first function plus the derivative of the second function. Okay, now we can use this property to move the constants outside of the derivative. Okay, so here in this first statement the constant is the 5 and in the second statement, the constant is the 8. Remember, constants do not have the variable in them. So, this becomes 5 times the derivative of sine t plus 8 times the derivative of cosine t. Okay, well, now we're making some progress because now we have derivative of sine t. Well, according to this identity down here, derivative of sine t is cosine t. So, we can take out the derivative of sine t here, put in cosine t, don't forget the 5. And then over here, we have derivative of cosine t, and looking at our list, According to this, wherever we see derivative of cosine, we can replace it with negative sine. So this is going to be minus 8. Again, don't forget that the constant is still there, times the sine of t. And let's just clean this up. The plus and the minus can be easily written as just a subtraction. Okay, and that's it. That's your answer. And again, it's a pretty simple process. First, see if there's any productive algebraic manipulations you can do. Then, if you have any additions, separate the derivative across the additions, or subtractions for that matter. Um, distribute the derivative uh, across the addition or subtraction. Then you move your constant out, constants outside, then you should end up with an identity, uh, th then you should be able to apply your identities. Okay, unfortunately I'm short on space, so I'm going to have to erase this in order to do the next problem. Okay, so the next problem is the derivative of... 10u squared plus 3e to the u. Again, not no particularly productive uh, algebra we can do here. So we just face this. We got, um, we have we do, however, have some addition, and that means that we can take the derivative and put it in front of the 10u squared, and also in front of the 3e u to the u. So let's do that. We got derivative of the first thing. That's 10u squared plus derivative with respect to u of 3e to the u. All right, after that, next step is move the constants. Oops, forgot the parentheses over here. 
not technically necessary, but it is it does help clarify what we're working on. All right, next up, move the constants outside. And so we get 10 times the derivative of u squared plus 3 times the derivative of e to the u. Okay. Now, this first term here, d d u of u squared, looks a lot like, oops, forgot to get rid of this thing, uh, looks a lot like a power rule statement. Okay, except this time, instead, uh, instead of the variable x, we've got u, and instead of the uh, constant n, we have, let's see, 2. So we can apply the power rule. on this first statement and get 10 oops, wrong color 10 times 2 times u to the first power which is just u and then we add to that, okay, derivative uh, with respect to u of e to the u well that shows up right here and derivative with respect to x of e to the x is e to the x, so derivative with respect to u of e to the u is going to be e to the u. So we get 3 times e to the u. Alright, real easy. And just clean things up, 10 times 2 is 20 times u plus 3e to the u. Okay, again, notice that this follows the same pattern as the last problem. Uh, algebraic manipulations first, nothing particularly productive there. Distribution second, identities third, and then a little bit more algebra to clean, uh, to simplify your answer. Okay, let's erase this again. Okay, last one is going to be an example where you need to do a little bit of algebraic manipulation first. We got this derivative with respect to x of the natural log of x over 3. Now we have an identity that allows us to solve for natural log of x, but not natural log of x over 3, so we need to do some algebra in order to get the, uh, either do some algebra or use some properties in order to get, change that x over 3 into uh, change the natural log of x over 3 into natural log of x. And fortunately, there is a nice little logarithm law that says that if you're dividing things, uh, if you're taking the logarithm of a quotient, that's the same thing as the difference between the two logarithms. In other words, if, let's do a little side panel here, if we start with the natural log of the quantity a over b, that's the same thing as the natural log of a minus the natural log of b. So if instead we have the natural log of x over 3, that's the same thing as the natural log of x minus the natural log of 3. Okay, so wherever we see this, Oops, wherever we see this, we can take it out and put this in. So this is going to be the same thing as the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of x minus the natural log of 3. I guess maybe I should use parentheses instead of square brackets, but 
anyway. Distributing, okay, so now we've got it in a more identity-friendly formula. All we have to do now is follow the same procedure. Distribute the ddx's, because we have a subtraction. So it's going to be d dx of the natural log of x minus d dx of the natural log of 3. Okay, well, the natural log of 3, you actually don't even need a calculator to solve this because you're taking a derivative, and the natural log of 3 is a constant. There is no x in the natural log of 3. Whatever the natural log of 3 is, 3 comes out to, it's going to be the same regardless of the value of x. So, this is a, this second statement here is a constant. And we have a derivative that tells us the, uh, the derivative of a constant is 0. So, this part all goes away. Then we're left with the derivative of the natural log of x. Well, we have an identity that is exactly written that way. Derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. So we can say that this is equal to d dx. Oh, whoops, no, we don't need the d dx anymore. All this is is, and uh, whoops, all this is now is going to be 1 over x. Okay, and that is your answer. Kind of weird that the derivative of the natural log of x over 3 is the same thing as the derivative of the natural log of x, but like I said, this ends up just being a, a constant over here. This ends up just being a constant over here, and the derivative of a constant is always 0. Okay. Hope this worked out. Hope this is helpful.